Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook Live. Hello, YouTube. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Or good afternoon, depending upon when you're watching. It is about nine o'clock on Thursday morning right now, and I'm just going to uh, grab my computer over here. So if anybody asks any questions, I can answer them. Uh, the title of this video, this live, is frequently asked questions. I'm just going to talk about what we're doing here at the restaurant, what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do. So Jamie and I just spent a couple of days uh, going through upstate New York and uh, going to restaurants and little towns and seeing what everybody else was doing. So we um, had a perspective on what was going on uh, other places. So uh, we are uh, back. We are open tonight. We have a couple of cool announcements to make. Um, I want to talk to you about something that I'm really proud of that we finally uh, finally have done here. Uh, I taken a while to do it, but we finally did it, finally pulled the trigger. Um, it was a big cost difference, but we are, uh, we're ready to do that. Uh, it has to do with something about being greener than we already are, so we're excited about that. I'm just going to go here on my, um, let's see, on my computer in case anybody has any questions. One of, the, one of the things right now that's so confusing is New York State is in several, several different stages of phases. So you have upstate New York. You have the Hudson Valley, then you have New York City, and sometimes when Cuomo says something, people uh, misconstrue it, or they don't really know the law to begin with, and because uh, the laws have changed, the liquor laws have changed, everything has changed temporarily, things get extended, things don't get extended, and like, so yesterday, our seafood distributor calls us and goes, Marcus, do you want to cancel your lobster order this week? And I said, no, I, why, why do I want to cancel my lobster and clams and oyster order? He goes, because... Outdoor dining, I'm sorry, indoor dining is no longer allowed. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, it's no longer allowed. I just had another restaurant owner, a very well-known restaurant owner in the Hudson Valley came in uh, to the seafood distributor and goes, no, no more indoor dining. I need to cancel half my order. And I said, I, I didn't hear about that. And sure enough, Jamie and I, when we were in the car yesterday, we're listening to Cuomo's updates. And it's only for New York City that they're not doing outdoor dining when they do that next phase, which I believe was yesterday. So things get misconstrued very commonly. And this is a very well-known restaurateur in Newburgh that thinks that he can't have anybody inside of his restaurant. So he's canceling half of his seafood order because something got misconstrued. We ordered another restaurant uh, up in Hudson, New York, and we sat down for a margarita. And they told us that by law, New York state law, that we could not sit at one of their tables and order alcohol without ordering food, which is again, not true. If we were to deliver food, if we were, if you we wanted alcohol to go, not on my premises, but to go, then you have to order food. That's the law. And when we pulled it up on the Facebook uh, State Liquor Authority page and we showed him, I was like, "That's not. That's not. That's not the state law. That's your. That's your law." Which, by the way, is illegal. You cannot deny people alcohol. It, this is coming. This becomes the, all these liquor laws become very, very confusing. So we cannot deny people um, liquor service here. Uh, there's only a couple ways we can deny them liquor service to serve them a drink. One, we don't think they're 21, they don't have an ID to prove it, okay? Two, they're already intoxicated, um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, if they're pregnant, we have to serve them. If they come in just for a drink and they don't want to order food, we have to serve them. Uh, so this restaurant was telling us something that wasn't true. He didn't know he was talking to another restaurant owner. And so the manager came out and we said, no, this is not the case. We, we would have come here to eat earlier, but you were packed. So we had to go somewhere else to eat, but we wanted to come here. And now it's near closing time. We just want to sit down and have a margarita. And so the manager reluctantly said, well, I just have to put food on your table because it's a law still and I don't want to get in trouble. So they put chips on our table that we didn't touch. Um, but again, it's, a lot of things are very, very confusing here. So if you have any questions, ask away. We're getting on a phone call today at 11 o'clock with Pat Ryan, uh, the county executive they're doing. Is it for restaurants only again today? Uh, or what is it for? I believe there will be a couple of different businesses on there. I know Mohonk is going to be on there. So we're getting on a phone call at 11 o'clock with Pat Let's Ryan. Find out what, what's what's, what's, what's current, what's happening. Ulster County, because I think you mentioned already all counties are all different. All counties are different. New York City went into phase three yesterday except for restaurants, right? Except for restaurants. Restaurants are not in phase three in New yep. York City, which I think you probably mentioned. Yep, they're not allowed to do indoor dining in, res in restaurants. In New York City. In New York City, in New York City. So it gets very confusing with all the different 
the different regions of New York and each region is in a different phase, so it can get very confusing. So we are allowed to seat you inside, restaurants are allowed to seat you inside. Now, us here, we're not ready to actually go full scale inside yet or to the maximum that they're allowing us to. A lot of restaurants that we went to, we were in Hudson, we were in Rhinebeck, we were in um, in several other places we, would, we, we stopped in. And Jamie and I did a lot of cycling in the last two days, so we were on these trails cycling and stopping into little towns. And we found that most restaurants, even though they're allowed to have people inside, are just aren't ready to do it yet. So, um, outdoor, uh, so Greg is saying outdoor dining. So outdoor dining for us. Now we did see people in here last week socially distanced because it started downpouring outside. And so we were in, we have the tables here ready to go. So when it started downpouring, we brought people inside. Uh, we're still set up as a grocery store. So that's one of the most commonly asked questions right now for us here at the restaurant is, are you still selling steaks, salmon, salt, yeast, flour, things like that, organic strawberries? Yes, we are. The list is published on our website. It goes out in a, out in a, uh, every other day or so email now. We're putting the list out. We still have vegetables. We still have vegetables. We still have all kinds of organic, local, things like that. So you can still buy. Corn came down in price. Corn did come down in price, folks. Um, thank goodness because uh, and it's still very, very, very expensive. It's twice, more than twice the normal price, but it came down $30 a case. So uh, we're waiting for local corn to become in season so we can... Um, Hopefully alleviate the price. Before I talk about more of the most commonly asked questions here, um, I just want to, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm trying to just find my video here on Facebook. Which I was... Okay. All right. I'm getting ready to go cycling here in a few minutes. I'll say I have my cycling shirt on. So I'm going to go up the mountain. So something that we're super, super proud of that um, here at the restaurant that I just pulled the trigger on is we've now switched to biodegradable, biodegradable trash can liners. Uh, we are green certified. We've been green certified since 2007, 2008. We were the very first certified green restaurant in upstate New York and full service. So, uh, there was like a coffee shop in Syracuse that was certified before us that I don't even know if it's open still. But as far as full service restaurants, we were the very first in upstate New York to be certified green, which means we have to comply with regulations from the Green Restaurant Association. We don't have to do everything they say, but we have to do so many different steps. We currently do about 55 different initiatives here at the restaurant that, um, that make us green. The neat thing about this is you can go on to dinegreen.com, dinegreen.com, and it's a directory of restaurants across the country that are certified green. And if you click more information about the restaurant, it'll tell you exactly the initiatives or the steps that they're doing to be green. A lot of restaurants like to say they're green, what's called greenwashing without being certified. And I've seen this over the many years. Oh, we're this, we do that, we do that, and they really don't do that, or they do two things, and that's it. So you can actually go online and see all the initiatives that we actually do. You won't see this, because this is brand new. We've not gone through our annual audit yet. So we have to go through an annual audit where we have to turn in invoices, prove what we're buying, take pictures of what we're, take pictures of what we're doing here, the unfortunate thing right now in this whole mess, in this whole COVID mess is they have like, uh, Ulster County had uh, laws in place to avoid uh, styrofoam, plastic bags, things like that. And when this whole COVID mess hit, they basically just scrapped all of that legislation for the time being and went back to serving plastic, serving styrofoam. So that's why a, restaurant, a lot of restaurants are back to styrofoam. It's a lot cheaper and uh, they don't have to answer anybody anymore. Uh, the, the county passed this law a few years ago, and it literally took them about a year to two years to actually enforce the law. I kept asking who's enforcing the law, and nobody knew who would enforce the law. So they passed this law, no styrofoam in restaurants unless your restaurant does less than $400,000 in sales, then you can get a special, a special permit or variance to actually do that. So, and a lot of restaurants do less than 400000 in sales. So. I kept asking them, well, who's enforcing it? They go, we don't know, we just, we made the law. We made the law, we don't know who's gonna enforce it. Now the health inspector finally enforces it. When the health inspector walks in, they want to look at your to-go containers and make sure you're compliant. And I've heard of some restaurants that have two stashes, styrofoam and the, and the, the non-styrofoam. Uh, when the health inspector comes, they kind of like, well, here's what we use. So 
Uh, we have we're we are now using biodegradable biodegradable trash bags. Super excited! They are three times the price of the trash bags we were using, and lately we were going through a lot of trash bags. But I just felt that now is the necessary time to make that move. So that will not be reflected if you go to DineGreen.com because we didn't do our audit yet. So if you go to DineGreen.com, you'll find all these great restaurants across America that are doing the right thing. Uh, we always, Jamie and I always look at that as a resource when we go out to eat, a lot of farm to table restaurants. Part of the certifications for Dine Green or the Green Restaurant Association is you have to have a certain amount of local food, a certain amount of organic food, a certain amount of vegetarian food. So they, they really monitor this on your menu. They can call any distributor at any time <clears throat> and call and say, hey, um, whatever food distributor, Aroma Time Bistro, and we had to sign, sign this and it's on file. And literally they can pull three months of my invoices and make sure that I'm not buying things that are not approved on the list. So it's, it's, it's really a very thorough way of doing that. So if you know any restaurants that are claiming to be green, or any chefs that are claiming to be green, urge that they get certified and be held accountable. Uh, so, let's see. So some of the most commonly asked questions, we have a delivery here, Jay. Okay, make sure that he gets all the milk crates. All those milk crates are for him out there. They're by the dumpster. There's a ton of them there. Everything we've been, last couple months, they haven't picked up. So, uh, some frequently asked questions about aroma time right now. Yes, we are open for outdoor dining. Something's, I, Jamie's emptying a, uh, a cooler, so I heard the ice, the water coming out of the cooler, and just emptying into a bucket. So we are open for outdoor dining. Um, we are still doing groceries. Yes, yes, you can still buy groceries from a steak, salmon, all that kind of stuff. Um, indoor dining is available only when we're out of tables because it's raining outside. We do have a tent outside. We have a tent that is uh, covered. We can fit several tables under there. We've expanded our garden space. We, uh, so the other day poured outside and we actually uh, brought some people inside to be a little more comfortable. We will start out through indoor dining soon, hopefully. Uh, we're not currently doing music. Uh, there's different, uh, different interpretations of the law if we're allowed to do music or not at a restaurant. I was advised by our, our person who does our liquor license not to, ha not to pay a band, not to have a band in here. Um, can you buy a cocktail to go or wine and beer to go? The answer is yes. We can give you a cocktail, we can give you wine, we can give you beer. You just have to buy one food item if it's to go, that's it. I don't care if you buy an apple, a pear, an order of hummus. By law, they want to see that we're also doing a food sale with alcohol, it's a food sale with alcohol. But you can buy 30 margaritas, you can buy you know, a pitcher of sangria, you can buy a case of wine, as long as there's some type of food in with it. So that's a, that is currently a state law. Um, the next question. Are we still doing our 9.99 specials? You know, when outdoor dining became available, we started doing our 9.99 specials, and we noticed that the sales of our 9.99 special was dwindling, dwindling big time. And to prepare things ahead of time, at and then sell them at a very, very low margin at 9.99, you have to do a lot of volume. When we were totally closed for outdoor dining, we would sell 50 to 100 of these 9.99 meals a night, sometimes more. Our buy one get one pizzas, we were doing 150 pizzas which is, that's easy to prep, but when you have to smoke chicken especially, or if you have to make a dish like our jerk chicken especially, and if you don't sell it, then all of a sudden you lose all this money and you can't sustain that, 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 that economic um, uh, ratio, that economic um, um, model of giving something away at a very reduced cost and throwing some away. So we tried to do our 999 special, but honestly what's happened is our lobster bake for $25 has taken over. Our lobster bake, we're selling over 100 of these on the weekends. The streets are closed in Ellenville for cars. They're open for dining. The whole block here on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from four to nine is blocked off. Restaurants put their tables out. We do our lobster bake out front this week. I'm adding oysters to it. I'll be out there shucking oysters. So that $25 lobster bake has stolen the show and has pushed our 9.99 specials to the side and so has our burger, our burger. When we reopened, we made it bigger. We put it on a pretzel bun and we dropped the price of it. We dropped the price on a lot of our things. Our salmon dish went from $30 to $15.99. You order the sides and it still comes out several dollars ahead. So we did lower our prices. One of the things that we were really, really uh, uh, shocked with at, uh, because we've been, we've been doing so many great deals on bottles of wine. You can literally walk in here, sit down, 
have a bottle of wine for $19.99 or $24.99. That is an amazing bottle of wine that normally would have been on our list for $40 or $45. But because we've done so much volume over the last three months and four months in wine, we've been able to buy wine and higher case lots. So instead of buying two, three cases, we can buy 10 cases and get a significant discount, which then we can pass that discount on to you, the guests. One thing that we, we were in our travels the last two days, traveling through upstate New York on the east side of the Hudson, was that and these restaurants that are doing takeouts, there was no deals. Everybody was charging full out prices. I know for me as, as a restaurateur that I feel that I can't charge full prices on everything. So we've, we've done a great program on draft beer where most of our pints are $5 a pint especially while the street is closed, to go $5 a pint. We're pouring Sloop Juice Bomb right now, or Fiddlehead IPA, for $5 a pint, and we're blowing it out of here. We're blowing through so many kegs of this. Um, and again, we're making up the volume, instead of, we would, normally would have charged $8 a pint for this pre-COVID. But I just feel as a restaurant owner, as a business owner, seeing this economic crunch, um, that it's, I, I just kind of feel hard charging what we would have normally charged previously but I found that every restaurant I went to had no problem charging their full prices, even to go. So I feel if you're getting something to go, which was the premise of our 9.99 specials to begin with, I don't have to wash the silverware, I don't have to pay a dishwasher, I don't have to pay wait staff. So there, I have less expenses in that, which means I can offer it as a discount, which, which is logical. Which is why if you're taking beer to go on, on the streets here, which you can walk around drink on the streets of so villages, wave the open container law, um, or if you're taking stuff out to go, that's why we can get rid of a bottle of wine for $9.99. I don't have to send somebody back to the table. I don't have to worry about my glasses breaking. We break so many wine glasses. We buy the, the Riedel, Riedel wine glasses, and we break so many wine glasses every month that we just keep buying every month two dozen, three dozen. Well, that adds up. I don't have to do that anymore, so I can pass that savings on to you guys. That's how that works, all right? So, um, we're still able to offer these, a lot of these great deals because we're not running at full scale. I don't have a full labor force here that I would have normally had pre-COVID. And so that, that's how that works, folks. So I was a little disappointed um, uh, in the way restaurants are still charging full price for everything walking out the door. We, uh, we stopped in for a pizza last night in Rhinebeck at Posto. Posto's an amazing pizzeria. Uh, he's just a very talented pizza maker up there. And, and um, great pizza. Uh, he has a patio out there, so we sat outside. We were in Hudson, uh, trying to eat in Hudson. It is so hard to get a meal in Hudson, folks. Hudson, New York. I thought it would be great there. Rhinebeck, though, Rhinebeck has a lot of the restaurants, the village there has set up street dining on a permanent basis, on a semi-permanent basis, and they put barriers out there, those big concrete barriers. And I gotta tell you, Rhinebeck was hopping last night when we drove through Rhinebeck. Really, really awesome. Um, we were in Millerton. Uh, we, were, we were all over that side um, doing a bunch of things. We were visiting some distilleries, which if you caught our Facebook Live the other day, we were at Millbrook Winery saying hello to them. We were with Derek at Harvest Spirits up there with uh, Derek. Uh, that's where Jamie did her Facebook Live up there. So we had a great two days off. Next week, Jamie and I are going to try to get to the Finger Lakes visit some of the wineries we buy from and cycle around Cuca Lake is what our plan is next week. So we are open six days a week. We're closed Wednesdays right now. Mondays and Tuesdays, um, we're probably gonna go to a format where you order and then um, you order, pick it up, and then take it to your table um, is the format for that. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays have been slower days and we're, we're contemplating closing on Tuesdays, but we're gonna still stay open, but we have to balance the finances, the economics of, of having wait staff on and things like that, because all this costs money. And when we look at the numbers, the numbers are just, wow, this doesn't work um, to have that many staff on. So we're gonna try a new format on Mondays and Tuesdays, which a lot of, a lot of restaurants in Hudson were doing this, is what they were doing. You that's walk up, that's all they were doing, the restaurants in Hudson. Walk up, you walk up, you place your order, and you come back 20 minutes later and pick up your order and sit down at their seats outside and they clean up after you. Um, same thing in, um, in uh, Hillsdale, where was the other place we went to um, yesterday? Yeah, another town we went to, the same concept. So Mondays and Tuesdays, we're gonna try that. Um, the diner we went to. Milton. You only sat outside, you, you saw the service. You only saw the service, that's right. That's right. So we're gonna try that concept where you order your food, um, get delivery of your food, take it to your table, and um, if you want something, you come back. Just It's a lot to have staff 
waiting on all these tables and uh, doing that financially, it's a lot. So you we're have just, to have a lot of staff. We have to have a lot of staff. So we're just trying to balance, trying to balance a budget and make sure that we can still be here and do what we do. So somebody asked, he said, is it lobster and clam bake with tails or whole lobsters? Okay, so this is a, this is a, a, a big, a big question. Thanks for asking that because I meant to talk about this. So I put a sur little survey out there to see if people wanted tails or lobsters. Lobsters or tails for the lobster and clam bake. A lot of people started saying tails, tails, tails. But I noticed that everybody who walked up to me on the street here when I cooked 100 lobster bakes last week preferred whole lobster. So online reflected one thing, here in person reflected another thing. So I was up in the air about it. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to buy 100 lobsters every week. When we're out of the 100 lobsters, we're gonna switch to tails, and that's gonna happen sometime on Sundays. Uh, so that's the story with that. So we're gonna be doing both. Lobsters first, then we're gonna roll into, roll into tails. Now, we're gonna add this week, um, I got some awesome pretzel, pretzel buns which are we use for our burgers, but now I got them for like sausages and hot dogs. We're going to actually add a lobster roll onto the menu and we're adding oysters onto the menu this week. So I'll be outside shucking oysters, cooking lobsters, doing all that. I'll be out there with another one of our, our kitchen staff, our culinary staff doing that on the weekend. So we have a huge 10 foot table with a built-in sink that's I'm putting on wheels today that we can roll in and out, ice everything down and serve. It's gonna be a really awesome, awesome setup that we have. So thanks for asking that, that uh, question, Casey. I appreciate that. Um, if anybody else has any questions, I can answer them right now. If not, I am going to say goodbye in a couple minutes and get on my bike um, and go running. I see Dave's on. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Um, at Hello, Esteban. Um, so Casey, were you um, looking for tails or were you looking for the whole lobster? I don't remember what you were looking for. You made a comment somewhere. Um, hi, Susan. Uh, Brian's on. Hey, Brian. Uh, Brian owns a Golden Rail in Newburgh. Great, great beer, uh, beer place. And uh, I know he's been busy throughout all this. Uh, Robert's on, uh, the owner of My Brother Bobby's Salsa. If you can't get that, I think it's in Adams and a few other stores here in the area. Uh, so a bunch of people joining in. Uh, Greg was on. So, hi, Barb. Uh, thank you, everybody. So, um, you were looking for tails, Casey. Okay, tails. All right, so Sunday afternoon, um, just call. Call Sunday, see how we are with the lobsters. We didn't sell all 100. I'm still at the whole lobsters. But at the rate we're going, uh, the lobster bake is super, super, super popular. So, I don't see a problem with us selling. Like last weekend before, we sold 130 of them. So that's the story with that. Um, all right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go on my bike ride right now, and then I have to uh, to uh, take care of business to get on this uh, phone call at 11 o'clock with um, Pat Ryan, the county executive, and see what any new current updates, changes, things like that are going on in the restaurant world here in Ulster County. All right, folks, so that's it for now. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Don't forget to catch Jamie live at 4 o'clock. Uh, for her happy hour. Something we're hoping to add next week is uh, Harvest Spirits, their hand sanitizer. We have a couple bottles here for ourselves now that we're using in-house. Uh, and hopefully he'll have it posted to the Farm Hub so we can buy that right through the Farm Hub for next week. So uh, people are asking us about sanitizers, hand sanitizers. Um, thanks, Linda. I'll have a great day. Hi, Ron. Ron's a fellow restaurant owner uh, down in Tennessee, I believe. So hello, Ron. How's it going? And that's it, folks. I'm going to get out on my bike ride and get an email going out so you guys can see everything that's going on. And we'll talk to you later.